This is one of Decon Prime supporters, Rich404, here to say to enjoy this video, and make sure to visit and to subscribe to his channel for more. Get ready folks for another awesome review from Decon Prime. Let's do this. Alright guys, uh, well today I'm bringing my very first uh, Nerf tutorial and honestly I want to give a big thanks to a very good friend of mine, Rabe, which inspired me to customize my own Nerf guns. I did a lot of tutorials on the channel, uh, quite a bit, and I'm basically no, uh, I'm not new to when it comes to painting anything. I've done painting a lot of models in the past, but I never really painted a Nerf gun before. So I'm very happy my third one so far. I did send it myself. I sent it Robbie actually for of Christmas, my very first uh, customized Nerf gun. It was the M6 Halo gun, and he loved it a lot too. And after doing my very first gun, it was actually pretty fun. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do some more. So the uh, second one I did was kind of like a, a Judge Dread type of gun. Which again, actually was also a zombie gun as well too. And I'm not sure if it's on here somewhere. Probably not. Anyway, I thought I'll just buy some more, you know. And this one here I got for Christmas as well too. And it's the Crosscut Nerf Gun. And this one is to be more of a challenge too because, uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, you can tell. Good patch as well too. This one has two triggers for the chainsaw and for the firing for nerf as well too. So this one to be more challenging and uh, yeah, it's gonna be more. But anyway, I just wanna give a big thanks to Rob H for inspiring me to do my own nerf guns. And uh, I let you know as well too that I'm gonna be selling my nerf guns too. This one I'm not gonna sell because this is my Christmas present, so it's my my own gun as well too. But my future guns I will be selling as well too. So. If you see one you like, let me know and I will sell it to you guys, okay? Anyways, um, I guess here we go, I guess. This one, again, be more of a challenge. Uh, yeah, so I hope I can do this. Anyways, uh, apparently there's two layers, apparently. Uh, here for the saw blade and the second one for the main part of the gun as well, too. And I'm pretty much debating what color to choose for the overall color. Uh, I'm not really sure. I was thinking of black at first, but I've done black in the past for my second gun. So I want this one a little bit differently. So I chose, uh, I'm going to give it a base cut of black, of course, but the overall color would be this right here. Astolium Metallic Aluminum. This one here I might go over with a fine black spray to give it a more dark chrome. I mean darker, uh, kind of gun metal I guess it is pretty much, but... I couldn't find gunmetal, so I gave aluminum as well too, metallic aluminum. So, uh, I gave it what too. And this one has a lot of detail, as you can tell by this. You got uh, a chain as well. That might give probably a silver with uh, raw iron too, as well too, some rust as well too. Silver for the uh, bolts. You got some wires, I guess. I might get that me red maybe. Got a very nice wrench, but it's kind of weird, but I'm going to get that probably, again, probably silver. Or maybe a dark, dirty silver, I guess. I'm not sure. We got some bolts here. Screws. This one here, I'm not sure what this is. Pretty much. Uh, I might maybe go gray or black for the handle part. I might get maybe black probably for that. Some silver highlights. And probably, I was thinking about tan for this. I mean, dark brown to imitate leather. I'm not sure yet. Probably, I think that chrome, maybe for handles, maybe, I don't know. And that's silver for the uh, saw blade. Now, we're thinking about maybe adding some blood for the uh, saw blade. It'd be cool if we did that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, again, very thick saw blade. But anyways, uh, yeah, it's going to be a uh, hmm, challenge. <laughs> so... But you know what? I'm gonna go for it anyways, you know? Hey, why not? But anyways, uh, like Rob A said in his tutorial, it's good to have a baggie for your screws. I don't have one right now, but I have this right here for a baggie for screws. Use that too, probably. And, uh, 
And they're here, prizes for the internals for the big container as well too. I don't have any bags right now, they're in the house somewhere. This is around my garage, I'm gonna use it right now, so I'm not sure what bags are. That's fine though. But again, it's good to have, same for the internal, same for the screws. And uh, I kind of recommend you guys kind of like maybe take a picture or maybe record what you're doing. That way you know where the internals go to inside. And this has got a great memory. I don't. But if you do, yeah, that's great. But anyway, this is a great gun. I love it. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> and of course, it's a plunger design, which I think they have probably a rail here somewhere with teeth that allows it to turn. Combined with the plunger design with two, but it's basically a real plunger design. That's all it is, pretty much. So, and also has a cool rail on top as well too for attachments. If you have one, pretty nice as well too. Overall, great, great gun. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna get Phillips as screwdriver, and I'll be right back, guys, in a second. All right, and uh, this one I might use instead. I got uh, two Phillips as screwdrivers. This even here is kind of narrow one. This is pretty good. This one might be too thick. Yeah, too thick. So, uh, probably a very small, fine Phillips head. Anyways, uh, yeah, it might be two layers, you can tell. Got outer and inner, so let's get it here first. Here, let's see. I'm leaving this here. I'm leaving it inside there temporarily. It's kind of weird that it has two maple leaf screws right here. But they go right through there. That's kind of weird. Okay, yeah, that's a normal size one, so that's kind of weird. That's fine, though. But again, it's good to recall, record what you're doing, so you know where everything goes when you're done. Because me, I'm the lousy memory, so, yeah. So yeah, this is a lot more complex than I'm used to. The first two guns I did were just basic guns, what they were, nothing really fancy. And yeah, you always want to take time to take it apart. Okay. All right, uh, not too bad. Okay, screws are normal size. I'm kind of surprised they'd be longer. But yeah, this regular size screws. Okay, yeah, okay. So it kind of works like that pretty much. Okay. And I was thinking about when I'm done, adding blood inside a blade. That'd be kind of cool if I did that. I might do that. I'm gonna keep this here. As well, I don't mind that whatsoever. I don't care. Okay, uh, so the that's the outer part. The side. Okay, main part now. Okay, this is the fun part, guys. So, like I said, my third gun so far. So, I hope I don't mess up. This is pretty I mess up. Again, the screws are the same size too. Okay, it makes it easier. Sometimes you have screws of different sizes, it's kind of good to know where they go. Make a video as well too, or taking pictures where they go. So far, the guns I've done so far, three so far I've done, including this one of course, they all have same size screws, so... Alright guys, they're all screwed up, and if I screwed off I should say. And it's time, and what I have learned so far, when you take these things out, it makes it very slowly and carefully. This one especially is what too, but it has two triggers, what too, so let's open this closely and very slowly as possible. Now, yeah, once in a while, they have pins once in a while. This one might not have any pins, I'm not sure. It's only a plunger design. So I might get lucky, this one here, and have a plunger as well. It's very easily. That's the one you want to be careful with these uh, nerf guns so far, I've learned so far. Pretty sure there's no more screw. Oh, oh yeah, I've got a screw. This might be pretty easy to take off. It didn't look too hard to take off and on. Okay. So yeah, always be careful. That's what I learned so far. Okay, this is actually pretty easy. Okay, well, not too bad. Alright, now some screws did stay inside, so I'm going to take them out right now. The interior looks too bad, there's a lot of gears, of course. Okay, oh, 
Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's two layers. I might just take this off, maybe, and paint it separately. Okay, well, that's good. All oh, screws are the same size. Thank the gods. Okay. Internals look not too bad. Okay, basic plunges on. You can tell. Uh, so you can tell there's more gears. I apologize. <laughs> more gears than anything else, pretty much. So it works on a spring, as you can tell. Yeah, I should make sure I've done everything pretty much. So, yeah, not too bad. So it works basically on a spring design with gears. Okay, don't look too bad. This right here is a basic plunger design. But that, it locks in place. That's pretty basic. So, it doesn't look too bad. Okay. I thought it would be more complex, but it's not too bad. Okay. So, yeah, guys. So, yeah, that'd be my first tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy this. I really do. So, uh, what I'm going to do first, the box right here. This one here also has the new generation, I used to say, of. I you call them the clip space that they hold your stock in place. Usually they have springs, usually. This one here doesn't have a spring at all. Which is kind of weird, but it's plus all it is. So, I actually the old generation, a new one, and I'm not sure what all this gun is. Uh, it's gonna copyright in. Hmm, does it say copyright? I should say copyright somewhere. I don't know if you guys care or not. <laughs> Yeah, like Robbie said one time, this is for learning, not for having fun. What the hell is copyright, anyways? Oh, here we go. Oh, 2016. Oh, sorry, it might be 2016. Good thing. Uh, this one here, I never really paint because this, you don't see how much anyone is, so. Uh, you only have a total of three springs. That's all you have, pretty much, so. I'm going to paint the handle, of course. This one here has. Pretty small springs, you can tell. So I'll take that off for now. This one here goes to this one here, so I know where it goes. So put that all together. Actually, this one here be side. This side is on the side. Okay, the handle again works off uh, another spring, completely different than the other ones. You can tell. This one here might paint the same color, because the same type of handle is on it, so I might paint that the same. Okay, uh, the gears are pretty basic, like so. These are not going paint at all, period. Don't paint these, because they could damage as well. Let's see, I have another part here as well. Okay, I'm not sure what that's for, but uh, I guess it does work somehow. Oh, okay. I must be teeth side there somehow, it works. Get that part for now. Come on, come on. There we go. So it must work like this. Okay. Okay, well, that works. Let me see for a second here. Oh, that's what works. So I know we have turned the blade the opposite direction. All it goes back normal again. So then here must stop us somehow. That way we can't turn it. Automatically. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. So it's like this, it's like this, like that. Okay, so I know where it goes. Okay. So it's going to record what you're doing as well. I mean, if you don't, if you have a good memory, that's fine, but I don't have. Memory sucks. So this goes like that. So these pins here should be the same size. And they are the same size. Good. Okay, uh, plunger. Pretty basic design. It's almost the same thing as the M6 that I sent to Rob Aza for a gift. Uh, same play design, same uh, caulking as well too right here. This right here I might paint as well with the handle. So it has a front barrel as well. This one here you might have to be careful because spring could spring out of control. Like so this one is to be pretty easy to lock in place. So. Now, like all these guns, they have lubricant inside them. So you might have to get more lubricant in the future to basically reset it. So I always have a very thin lubricant as well. But, um, let's see here. Take it off, Ron. Okay. 
You know what? This might be stuck on. I don't think I can get off at all. Uh, well, actually, there's a screw inside there. There's a screw in there. I uh, wonder if I can get off, because I do want to paint the uh, handle part as well. I do apologize. Can't zoom out, but it's more this is the best I can zoom out, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I do apologize. Anyways, let's see if I can take this off and just get the handle, this spring out of there anyways, out of the way. Okay. Okay, pretty basic. It won't come out, so it must be made where it stays in there because the plastic part holds in place. I just want to get the uh, this part out, out of the way, so I can paint this as well. So this here goes like so, like that. Yeah, it's for me, not for you guys, for me. <laughs> so I know where it goes. So, I'm gonna leave the spring attach as well, too. I'm not gonna take it off. That's... Here's all the same design, so it doesn't matter what you put in. So, yeah, it's good to, if you have an extra lubricant, just make sure uh, you don't take too much off of it. Accent. Oops. Okay, back on again. Uh, I'm gonna leave the spring off as well. Might as well take it, just keep it off. So yeah, uh, my first tutorial. It's pretty nice. Uh, this one might paint as well too. Not sure what color though. Uh, this one I'm not really sure what color I'm gonna paint this, but on the side, based on what you hear, based on the turn right there, and paint my paint right there. All right. I'm gonna be glad these are two pieces though. I'm gonna be glad about that. That way you kind of save the masking things off. But I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Um, this right here, I'm not gonna paint because you don't see on the other side. It's hidden, so I'm gonna keep it off. Okay. There's only the same both sides, so it doesn't matter what size you put on. It actually, does. Uh, does it? No. Same thing both sides. Usually, I think these right here, I might paint these inside. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna think about that one for a while. This one, definitely paint, so you see it through the. Eye holes right too as well. You can tell, you can see it on uh, both sides. You see the Nerf logo. That might probably sand off, I think, probably. I'm not sure. Anyways, I basically have uh, painting stuff, non painting stuff, and screws, and that's about it. Uh, so basically, it's not. I thought it'd be more complex, complex inside, but it's pretty simple. Anyways, what I'm gonna do is, um, there's one thing you gotta do, if you don't mind messing things up, is sand parsing down. Uh, for me, I'm gonna leave the zombie thing in place. I don't really care about that. A little too. But this right here is painted on. So I might, because the top coat once in a while will make a good crinkle. Uh, kind of like a reptilian skin. You, know, you don't want that, unless you want that effect. It works out once in a while, sometimes it doesn't. So, I'm gonna get my sandpaper and be right back, guys. Alright, uh, basically, what I have here is my little baggie of sandpaper. You can use a Dremel if you want to. Uh, I don't, maybe because it might scratch it as well, too. It might create gouges inside the plastic. I don't wanna do that. Not that. You wanna use a fine grip. You don't want anything too harsh. It could damage the plastic, too, as well. But right now, what I'm gonna do is. Ouch, that hurt. In the garage right now too, so I got a lot of nails around me. Ow. Uh, anyways, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to separate these layers. Uh, so I'm gonna try to pop this thing out. It only has two. I hope there's not glue inside there. Which might be glue. No? Is there? Mm, there's no glue in here. I hope not. Okay, I hope there's no glue inside here. I hope not. I don't think there's any screws. I don't think there is at all. Eh, no screws. It should just come right out, actually. Honestly, it should, but it's not. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah it's kind of uh, gemming. These right here are kind of gemming in there as well, too. Uh, there we go. Not too bad. This would be easier to paint too, if separate as well. There we go. Oh, that's easier. 
So yeah, that's a good idea. It really is. So these are here only on one side. So. And I might sand down this wood too. I might sand out everything if I can. So, so yeah, this is a, a cool design. It really is. This is the coolest part, I think, too. Anyways, uh, let's try sanding it down a little bit. I might. Let's see here. Oh, this might be the best grip, or. Uh, this one might be better, I think. This one might be better. I'm not sure what gauge this is, honestly, guys. Three? I don't know. Is that a gauge? I don't know. Hey, basically, you use something that's the finest part that it is. This one here might be okay. That's not anyone's. Anyways, I'm going to do the other part as well, off camera. This here is nothing as well too. I'm lucky. I might get, I might send off this right here, the caution thing. I might send that off probably. But no paint though, you can tell. So that's a good thing about that. Uh, no paint there as well too. Again, caution. I might send off as well too, lightly. Uh, okay, this right here has this uh, paint on. That might interfere. Um, this here might be okay to use. Flat surface, I mean, very rough surface should be okay. Alright. Uh, let me try using this off. This is pretty shallow littering as well, so it should be fine. Take off. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I kind of do. There we go. This is over lightly, you know. I definitely want to buy that uh, block sanding as well. You can <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, that's my fault. <coughs> Anyways, uh <laughs> now you can if you want to customize a nerf gun fully built if you want to. Uh it's more work. Uh to me it's more difficult, but you can do it. I seen this a few on YouTube that they did fully built, they did a great job. I mean I was honestly impressed. I was like, wow. So you can. But again, it's uh, 
least to me, for me personally, it's easier to do it was fully in parts. That way, you know, you got everything painted, nothing left behind. The internals are not damaged in any way. You could damage the internals, especially the triggers, what too, if you paint it fully completed. Uh, you could. Well, I've seen a few so far on YouTube, they, they did a really good job. I was uh, honestly impressed. But for me, I just kind of recommend you guys take it apart if you're able to. That way, that way you get everything pretty much. Okay. <clears throat> Not bad. Pretty smooth. So. Hmm. So. And yes, I did breathe some dust in my mouth. It was not a good experience. Anyways, uh, uh, this right here I might just keep. That would be kind of like a name brand for the saw blade. So yeah. I might keep that. Pretty cool saw blade. Pretty thick. Alright, uh, anyways, I got pretty everything sanded down pretty much. At least best I could. This here is kind of a pain to sand down, but I might be that alone. It's rough now, so it should be fine. Got that. Nothing inside. Obviously. Get these sanded down. Uh, this. That's like, yeah, that's something. Again, I don't really care about that much, anyways. Get inside there. Okay, this. Uh, again, this. Done. Okay, there's only. Right here. This one's pretty deep. But I don't know. I don't, I don't care about this, but I thought, you know what? Eh, I'm know. here, might as well do some standing. If this ain't block, it'd be easier. But I don't have one. I did not buy one. Someone went Dollar Tree a while ago. I might buy one in there. It's got a Yeah, I'm cheap, guys. I'm cheap. I'm sorry to say. If anything cheap, I'm going for it. Okay, yeah. That's good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. So, that's all there is in there. So that's pretty much done. Handles are done too. Looks like good anyways. Now, finally, is this right here. This is the uh, Nerf logo. Uh, should I keep that or just shave it off? I don't really know. You know what, I don't really care. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on instead. Yeah, why not? I don't care about that anyways. <laughs> I don't keep it. Yeah, I don't keep it anyways, so who cares. Alright, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to get a good nice sink here. Wash you guys off thoroughly and clean off my table because I got a lot of dust. Wow, that's a lot of dust. Uh, yeah, always getting masks, guys. Always getting masks. Trust me. Or be next to the window. I am next to the window, but it's closed. Smart amusement. I'm so smart today, it's not even funny. <laughs> so, whatever, I guess. Anyways, uh, I'll be back with uh, part two, which will be including the painting process and show off the parts after they're cleaned thoroughly. Again, uh, you sink, uh, warm water, and when you're done, you know, when done with wood two, put them on a towel, let them air dry for a while, at least for a day. The next day, get a damp cloth, I mean, a dry cloth, a dry cloth, and go like this, makes it dry the bone. So you back, I um, guess, uh, next time you see me, which is part two. For now, this has been part one of prepping your weapon, taking it apart, uh, documenting everything you've done. Like I said, when you're done, you know where to go. Look at your video for reference, where everything goes, pretty much. But, uh, honestly, this is not too complicated inside. I was uh, a bit surprised. I thought it would be more complicated than that, but it wasn't, so. Again, not a lot of internals. Only a few, which is... Thank God. So, I'm very glad about that. Anyways, uh, this one here, don't be sand down. Candles don't have to be sand down. No paint of any kind. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my part one of my very first Nerf tutorial. Uh, copyrighted, uh, rub day. So, <laughs> just kidding. And again, I hope you enjoyed my first mini video. Again, in the future, if you see anything you like, let me know. And I definitely sell it to you guys. Again, this is hands off. But I can't buy another one for you guys. If you want me to buy another one, uh, I'll sell it to you, okay? And again, that is a Nerf crosscut with cool chainsaw effect. And again, thanks for watching. 
拜拜。